little overview from class today, um, starting with our review of the cell phone data set. We just wanted to do a little exploration of the churn column. So first we loaded it in, take a look, see there's no missing data. And this was the feature that we're interested in exploring a little bit, the churn feature, whether or not somebody was churned. Um, we can explore a little bit about the distribution of the quantitative variables if we want with describe. And then we can start visualizing um, our data with something like the count plot. So if we wanted to count within categories of any of these uh, our features, um, we can do that with the count plot. So for example, to start with for the churn, we can see that uh, there were far fewer people churned than, or not churned than churned. And if we look at an, the average, this will actually just tell us the percent, and it's not even 15%. We can use this count plot to look at any kind of um, uh, small count variable. So there was also this uh, feature called customer service calls. We can count how many people made different numbers of customer service calls, and you see that it trails off towards to nine, which was the largest number of customer service calls. Um, so if we wanted to see who, uh, who those customers were, something about those customers, we could use our normal filtering. So we'd say DF, um, and we're looking at the customer service calls, um, and we want to know when, who equals nine here. And it seems there were two people who made nine calls, and both of them did not end up staying with the company. Um, and maybe even if we just wanted to look at all of those uh, who were maybe on the high end, so instead of just equal to 9, um, greater than or equal to uh, 5. And also we could just say churn uh, not mean and okay, yeah, well, so of the, cu the the customers who called customer service more five or more times, more than 60% of them were churned. Um, and similarly, if we look at that on the other side of this, uh, just switch this to uh, less than five, we see it's only 13%. So the number of customer service calls seems to be important to whether or not the customer, the people were churned. So, you know, we, maybe we want to explore this group of people a little bit more and understand, uh, try and get a feel for what it was that was different about their plans or that maybe led them to the customer service calls. It may be uh, that some of these were international plan holders, like we were led to from earlier, where we looked at people who had... Um, an international, uh, well, or we're about to look at people who had international plans. Okay, so yeah, if we go and dig in to something like the international plan column and see, then group that by international plan and then the, the churn, whether it was yes or no, and count those values, we see that there is a different distribution between the two groups. There's a bigger disparity between people who didn't have an international plan. There was a far lower rate of churn than those who did have an international plan. So we could we should go back and see maybe if these customers um, actually had international plans or not. Maybe there's a higher rate of people who were calling these uh, who had international plans than than in here. And that would be a very important finding for us. Uh, if we were the telecommunications company, we're not, so it's just something to notice. Other things we could do is look at who was calling uh, customer service in, in what states. So, for example, it's a group by the state and then the customer service calls and look at the churns, uh, how many people there were, really is all that's happening here. And we would have a big long list for each state. If we wanted to make a new column called the call sum, which is the sum of all of these different kinds of calls, the day calls, evening calls, night calls, international calls. Um, we can do that. This is a new column. And then we can make a, uh, a plot of that distribution with a box plot and with a histogram. If we wanted to put those together, um, we can do that. 
with this little subplot method. This, uh, you don't need to pay too much attention to this, but if you're interested, this is a specification of the number of rows, columns, and which plot in that series like of rows and columns your count like the count of uh, the index of the plot that you're working on so this is two rows uh, first co one column this is the first plot two rows one column this is the second plot and there we go all right so then on to web scraping um, remember we had this idea of HTML this is the stuff you see in websites it's all housed in these little tags we're going to use these tags to navigate web pages and extract information. We use beautiful soup and this request library. We use requests to feed it URLs, links to web pages, and we use beautiful soup to parse that information, to navigate that page and find the information that we're looking for. So um, here's an example of a URL to uh, falafel places from Yelp. Um, this is what you get if you search for uh, falafels. More about ninjas in a second. So the depending on where you are, uh, you'll get a different result. And okay, so here is oh, this is the absolute best falafel in New York, Mamoons. Shout out. Uh, we want to just grab something like the title, um, the number of stars, and the, the text of this review. So remember, we did this by kind of inspecting these tags. So here, um, the first thing that we're doing is we're going to grab the titles. So um, the, the search that I'm looking at here, this one actually, uh, when I looked at it, I ended up in, in again, like, here's the URL. We use requests to get that response, we turn that response into a beautiful soup object and then we can start searching it. Okay, So the first thing we wanted to do was to try and find the title. Well, we looked at the title, we see it was in the span uh, deal. And if I inspect this, see here's my moons in the span, but if I find span um, well, the first thing that I do is I don't get my moons. I just get find. Um, or I don't get any restaurant name. I just get find. And if I look at this more, you know, I see that, okay, yep, here we go. This is not... There's a bunch of other things here that I don't want. So, all right, well, then we notice that it's actually inside of these A tags. These hyperlink tags are surround this. So I can extract these tags and I'll get that name with it. And these are A tags. And I'm also going to use w one of these uh, attributes here. The data analytics label, label biz name. Um, and the way to do that is to say, okay, I'm going to find the A tags, and you see again, if I just find the A tags, it doesn't give me, the first one is not the thing I'm looking for. But if I add to my search that attribute, the data analytics label, and its label, biz name, then what I get is the first, um, the first business, which in my search was the halal guys. And if I just extract the text from that, there it is, there's my title. So the next thing I do is I just, so I start with just finding and try and find the thing um, just on a single example, but then I can change this to find all to get all the business names. Now that's going to be a collection of things that look like this, that are all of this A stuff. So then what I'll do is I'll loop through and in each of those I'll extract the text. I'll have 20 some of these and I have to go through and, and grab the text from them. So uh, first I save it as a variable. Here's my find all, A, data analytics, label, biz name. It's gonna be all of these from the page. And then I can go and write a little loop to pop through here and each time look at the text of each individual thing. That's good. This is what I wanted. Names of falafel places. 
Got it. All right. Next thing I want are the ratings. So these things, these stars. I want to know what the rating of the uh, different business was. So if I inspect that, well, again, it looks like um, there's going to be this div here that contains that information. Um, so I'm going to try and grab that guy. And the way that I did that was that I noticed it also had a, um, well, first I did a div class biz rating. And if you do that, you, you get back a little bit more. Uh, and we can see that if I just um, find this, you see, like, I get, uh, I get more tags here. It's a collection of things. I, I had to grab like a, a larger chunk of things. But if I just add on to that, you can see where I, my rating is here, right here, in this title thing. Well, that title is in a div. And the thing that we call this title is actually an attribute. So if I look at uh, dot .div, okay, now I have what's inside of that div. And then I want to tell it the attributes. And if I just say attributes, it tells it shows me all of these, the attributes. It was class and title. So I just want title. And there we go. So now I have, you know, I just changed this to find all again. And that's all my ratings. Loop through it and uh, extract this div att attribute title from each of them. And when I do that, I get all my ratings. Finally, I want to grab these uh, reviews. So um, oh, that looks like it might be easy. Paragraph, class snippet, try that, sure looks good. So then I just do a find all with the same thing. Rip through, grab the text. There's all my text. Wonderful. I've got everything I need now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these pieces together. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to grab these three things, which are here was my restaurant names. Here are my ratings. Here are my reviews. Okay, I just copy and pasted that code from above. Now I'm going to create an empty list to store all of that uh, information. All right. So I create a list called name that instead of printing uh, the text, I append each of those to this list, each of those values to this list. Okay. So I'm just changing the nature of this loop rather than printing the results. I'm appending the results to this list. Same thing for stars, same thing for uh, the review snippets. And then what I can do is I can make a data frame out of the results. And what I get is a data frame that has my falafel options, a brief review, and an average rating. And if I really want to get crazy, maybe I want to write a function that will let me like search for any, um, any kind of thing on Yelp and return the same kind of thing. Return the name, a little bit about the place uh, in terms of the review and, and the star rating. So then we can just take all of this and pop it inside of a function, adding in those first two pieces where we got a response using request and turned it into beautiful soup. So what this will do is this creates a function where somebody can just enter a URL and it will spit back our data, a data frame, uh, the head of a data frame um, that contains that information. So for example, um, if I wanted to search for uh, beer in the Upper East Side, I just go to Yelp, search for beer, pop that in the, this function, and I get different beer places and their ratings. If I wanted to find um, what was this to search for? Uh, tofu. Here. Here's what kind of came up when I searched for tofu. If I wanted to find ninjas, here's what I get for ninjas. 
seems that it's mostly food. So, so that's that. And uh, what I would like you to do is just take a look at the um, take a look at my notes. Take a look over this tutorial, which the link is uh, uh, in the video, and um, go through the beautiful soup documentation and uh, try and find your own uh, reviews for what you want.